हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम मोहन चंद जोशी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम जामिया मिलिया इस्लामिया टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ मॉड्यूल माइक्रोस्कोप बेट्स इमेजिंग एंड इस एप्लीकेशन पार्ट बी अंडर दी पेपर जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग एंड रिकमेंड एंड डी एन ए टेक्नोलॉजी पार्ट वन सो द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव फॉर दिस मॉड्यूल इज दैट बाई द एंड ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल स्टूडेंट्स विल अंडरस्टैंड वट इज लाइट माइक्रोस्कोपी और ऑप्टिकल माइक्रोस्कोपी विल गेट एन ब्रीफ ओवर व्यू अबाउट डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ लाइट माइक्रोस्कोपी सच एज ब्राइट फील्ड डार्क फील्ड पोलराइजिंग माइक्रोस्कोपी फेस कंट्रास्ट माइक्रोस्कोपी एंड डिफरेंशियल इंटरफेस कंट्रास्ट माइक्रोस्कोपी वील ऑल्सो गेट अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट हाउ इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपी वर्क एज वेल एज अबाउट टू मोर टेक्निक्स विच एस एस पी एम एंड स्नोम माइक्रोस्कोपी इन द एंड वील समराइज ऑल दीज लाइट माइक्रोस्कोपी एज वेल एज इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपी Uh, to explain what are the uh, usage of these uh, microscopy light microscopy so light microscopy is the uh, also known as optical microscopy it is used in which the visible light is used to illuminate the sample and then uh, magnify a smaller object it could the design for a optical microscope as i also mentioned in the previous module can be very simple or the complex it can be very complex depending upon the requirement in terms of resolution magnification and the contrast and as i said in a simple microscope that was uh, used in the very beginning had a simple had a single convex lens but now if we use objective lens which has more than 10 lens in combination that are used so that we can get higher uh, resolution and the better magnification there are different variant of microscopy that are available and all of these are depending upon the sample that we want to visualize can vary and in optical microscopy we use the light which is used for this illumination of the sample uh, and modulates it to get a better contrast and in the end the in optical microscopy we can or the light microscopy we can visualize the sample either through a naked eye or can actually visualize it or capture it under the microscope bright field microscopy so this is the commonly used uh, method through which a sample is viewed and it is available with most of the microscope uh, right now because you need to first visualize where exactly your samples are and using this technique one been able to do that and how it happens actually so once you once you have put your samples in 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 a cover slip Uh, in a, on a slide and I put a cover slip on it now you illuminate that sample using a transmitted light what happens in that case the light is getting absorbed by the samples and then you can view it through the objective through objective to your um, retina or to your eyes now how the imaging is done in this case once you illuminate the sample the light which is transmitted through the sample will get absorbed by the sample due, due to its different differential refractive index in in each area so what happens in this case you get a contrast you get a dark imagery in a white background because the light is getting illuminated from the bottom dark field microscopy a, a bright field image which i mentioned earlier where which is produced in a bright background you have a dark image similarly a bright field can be adapted to generate a dark field microscopy based imaging method what 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 is done in this case that uh, on your condenser you block the light by putting up a disc disc there now what happens in this case the light is get reflected or refracted from the sample and it generates the image the magnified image which you see on your in your, in your microscope or through your eyes is actually a bright image and it is produced in a dark background as you can see at the image which is shown in uh, the further slide that compared to bright field the white field uh, the dark field will have the entire background is dark but your image is bright and what is the advantage of this technique is that it allows you to get an a better viewing of internal structure and also you can get it done in a live cells you don't have to do any staining just by using this step approach uh, you get a better understanding and a better resolution of internal bacterial uh, in internal structure of eukaryotic cells phase contrast microscopy now in this type of microscopy as the name also indicates there there is a contrast in the phase through which the sample is illuminated the phase contrast it allows differentiation between different internal structure of a living cell based upon the different refractive index 
within the cell each organelle acts as a different uh, organelle and depending upon its own composition it acts as a, it has its own differential refractive index so when the light same light falls upon two different organelles depending upon the complexity and the compaction of the organelle the light is different is diffracted and refracted in different way so the underlying principle in this is that the light which is incidenting that is hitting the sample and the one which is coming out from the sample is out of phase so we because it is reflected through different part it has it it has it and with a different refractive index so they are out of phase by using the phase plate we can sync them we can bring that out of phase light into the phase again back to phase and visualize it thereby we are getting a higher resolution image so as you can see in this picture we have a phase ring we have a condenser through which the light the specimen is illuminated and you can see it's the light is entering into a different uh, phase but once it is hit the hit the specimen and gone through the objective lens it is out of phase because it deviated from the uh, the, uh, the origin of its where the light was incidented under then by using the phase plate again we can bring that light back into the phase and then in this way we can see the difference in the complexity of the sample but just by looking at the difference in the transmitted light phase polarization microscopy in polarization contrast microscopy in this the sample is illuminated with a polarized light and the polarization light have a different vibration so when the sample alters the polarized light uh, the altered light is allowed to pass through an analyzer and that analyzer allows us to bring that polarization light into a into into to back into the same uh, vibration and same polarization so that it can be visualized and in this case the magnified light the image is produced in a dark background but by putting a polarization plate or a lambda plate we can also inverse the color and get our uh, um, um, can produce a generator um, colored image this this microscopy has been uh, used to visualize crystals as well as polymers differential interface contrast microscopy dic this is used in uh, combination with bright field microscopy also we get a different add-ons uh, with for with compatible with different objective lenses and this is called dic and dic improves the contrast as it is also improves the uh, overall uh, quality of a bright field image this is also known as normal key uh, microscopy in this sample is illuminated from a polarized light set of prism as well as filters are used so that these different um, phase light can be synchronized and can be used to generate a uh, image and the resulting image is also high contrast image so uh, we discussed about all these different kind of uh, uh, variants or variants of light microscopy and here is an example how a representative image looks like in the very first picture you see a picture which is generated by the bright field microscopy and you can see the entire um, background is white and uh, there is a contrast difference between uh, different uh, cells so this is a cell line image and you can see we have been able to differentiate the structural internal organs and inter internal structure of within the cell then we have dic which produce a very very high quality image phase contrast also provides a very high contrast in a darker background dark field microscopy uh, the object is whiter and the background is dark is dark because we have a uh, plate which is placed before the condenser and the polarized light using in combination with the lam uh, lambda plate and you can see uh, we get a colored image so these are the variation uh, that we we use uh, by manipulating the illuminating light source electron microscope now in electron microscope um, instead of using light as a illumination source of illumination here electron beam is used to illuminate the sample and this is also in this microscopy technique the beam of electron is transmitted through the sample and because it interacts with the sample 
that's why the sample information is transmitted in terms of in different contrast the electron beam is accelerated from the source of illumination that is electronic gun and then shot at the sample wavelength of electrons are 100,000 times shorter than the visible light uh, thereby it provides it a very high resolution there are two variants of it SEM and, and TEM the light microscope is used for live as well as fixed cells but electron microscopy is basically used for the fixed cells in the light the resolution of light microscopy is 200 nanometer while in this it is it can it will very very higher and as you can see in this picture once the electric beam is is hitting the sample it creates various energy gradient and which is which results in the electrons which are transmitted and can gives you more information all these transmitted and the scattered electrons secondary electrons can give us can give us more information about the sample uh, structure and its elasticity and its uh, its overall composition as mentioned earlier transmission electron microscope is actually the simplest form or the very first form of the electron microscope in this case a electron used as a beam so for illuminating instead of using a light electron beam is used for illuminating now uh, so the basic outline of a transmission electron microscope includes an electronic beam that need to be generated from an electronic electron gun so the way uh, it works is that electron gun uh, generates the electron beam now using the anode it is accelerated and also directed toward the sample and the sample has to be ultra thin it has to be uh, very thin approximately 100 nanometer or even less so that uh, it can be illuminated and can be better viewed so now the electron beam that has been generated directed by the uh, anode is further uh, focused by the electrostatic uh, or electromagnetic lens which allows it to uh, direct on the sample once the light or the electron beam has been uh, shot or has once it hit the samples what happens the image the Im uh, image is transmitted or uh, the image is formed by a transmitted beam of electron which are interacted with the samples and the transmitted light again is magnified by the uh, objective lens because in this case the, ele the, the uh, electrostatic lenses or electromagnetic lenses creates a convex lens which allows you to for the magnification which will be explained in next uh, slide as well so now this transmitted light is magnified and then it, that image uh, it can be captured by either uh, through your eyes or can be attached to a camera where it can be captured now as i mentioned earlier because this uh, electron beam uh, is uh, is hit uh, hitting the sample and transmitted light is making an image so the sample is actually fixed in this case that means the cells you cannot view a live cells that the cells are dead because you are hitting it with a very high um, um, voltage of electronic electric beam but the resolution that you get in this case is very very high one of the component of the electron microscope is the vacuum system the vacuum system is very critical for uh, the microscope because when the high voltage electron beam is passed through the system it has to travel in a vacuum system otherwise it can result in a, uh, in a in an arc as well as in a short circuit the tm imaging and there were therefore it, it is performed under very low pressure 10 to the power minus 4 pascal and what it allows is to, is to improve mean free length the electron interacts uh, with the gas and if we are using high voltage tm then it is also required that we match up with the uh, very high pre low pressure also it, so we can go up to 10 to the power minus 7 10 to the power minus 12 it allows that voltage difference between cathode and the ground stage without generating any kind of arc as i mentioned earlier also and the collision frequency between electron and gaseous atoms is reduced to minimal so if there is medium um, other than the vacuum what will happen the electron will interact with it and will give us a pulse signal or the lots of background noise which is not good for the sample uh, resolution specimen stage 
now this is made up of copper molybdenum or gold or platinum and as you can see in these two pictures uh, on the right hand side we see the grid which is uh, in which the sample is kept uh, the sample has to be ultra thin it should be around 100 nanometer in width so that it can be properly visualized and that uh, electrons can pass through this pass through it uh, easily thicker sample will have a problem in terms of the resolution because most of the electrons might get just trapped inside the sample and would just provide a dark black image instead of giving us a high resolution image the specimen stage is kind of uh, it looks like this where we have the vacuum rings as we as we know that inside the the system is vacuum tight so therefore sample is put in the in the, in the in the grid as shown in this picture and then these two rings ensure that vacuum is maintained inside and the sample is put on the uh, on this grid and that grid is kept in that stage and then the stage is pushed into the uh, under the to the microscope in which the electron beam will directly uh, hit on this grid containing the sample electron gun as the source of illumination in electron microscope is electron gun uh, is electron beams therefore this electron gun is used to generate the uh, electron beam it requires the filament a biasing circuit a well nut cup and a extraction anode to generate the electron beam as you can see in this picture we have a filament we have well nut cylinder which is negatively charged and once the filament is connected to the negative component power supply electrons are pumped through the electric gun and then there are anode which are helped to accelerate it as well as to direct the electron beam towards specific direction the well net is designed uh, calendar designed in such a way that you ha it has more negative charge on it so that we can uh, we instead of uh, so we can focus the electric beam toward the anode directly instead of getting it discharged within that cylinder or getting spread out within the cylinder electron lens so the microscopy lens in through which the, the electron beam is passed it is very uh, critical for the resolution as well as the contrast of uh, em imaging is actually made up of yoke and electromagnetic coils pole pipes and external control circuit as shown in this picture so the electromagnetic coil which generates a convex lens like configuration so that we can magnify the or the amplify magnify the the image the coils are located within the lens yoke and contain a variable current and coil also utilizes high voltage and therefore it requires because it utilizes uh, the high voltage therefore it requires a very high insulation if it is not highly insulated it might result in the arc aperture these are metal annular plates placed at the uh, fixed or movable optics so that allow the uh, passage of beam through the one axis only and this aperture size can be manipulated that's why we can manipulate the intensity of the electron beam that are passing through the sample that are passing through the uh, aperture it is very also important in so that the any scattered beam which is resulting from the sample is prevented from going back to the objective lens and getting imaged scanning electron microscope similar to um, tm scanning electron microscope is another variant of electron microscope in which electric beam electron beam is used to illuminate however in this they instead of looking at the transmitted uh, light in this case the scattered light is used to generate a uh, image of a sample so when an electron beam is bombarded on a sample the loss of energy due to interaction between sample uh, and electron beam results in a heat emission of low energy secondary electron uh, as well as the high energy back sc scattered electrons which are emitted and these electrons which provides which have the information about the sample and its composition in terms of a structure and topography are captured and that's why this information is taken uh, and to generate a three-dimensional image and remember because these scattered electron and the signal 
is coming with a differential intensity because the interaction is very differential depending upon the sample the thickness and the the composition of the sample that's why scanning electron microscope in compared to transmitter electron microscope provides a better resolution in terms of with the structure and topography this technique is used to generate a three dimension image of the sample as well comparatively it is slow but the image generated by this one is in higher resolution compared to higher resolution in terms of its spatial resolution is higher than the TEM. So as, as we discussed about SEM TM, so both form electron microscopy has certain variation and differences among themselves and that's what has been uh, tabled in this, uh, has been catalogued in this table. So as, as I mentioned earlier, SEM actually the image is formed based upon the scattering electrons that are we are getting once the electronic beam when the electronic beam hits the sample. On the other end in TEM we see the transmitted electron that are used to uh, form an image. And the secondary uh, the scattered electron that are captured uh, are producing the image instead of uh, making a transmitted light or uh, transmitted electrons. SEM actually focuses on understanding the surface and its composition. On the other end, the TEM uh, forms get, gets the information what is inside the sample. As I mentioned earlier, SEM electrons are interacting with the surface and getting scattered and the secondary electrons are captured by the, uh, by the machine. Also the SEM is a slow process because it scans the entire samples compared to TEM. Um, but SEM is very very powerful in generating a three dimensional image because we are getting a lot of information by capturing those scattered beam compared to TEM where we just get a two dimensional image that, were, that means we are getting information in terms of in X and Y. Uh, the resolution of SEM is uh, around uh, 0.4 nanometer while TEM gets at a very high resolution of up to 0.5 uh, uh, angstrom. And uh, similarly, magnification can go up to 2 million in, in SEM, while in uh, TEM we can get up to 50, X, uh, 50 million X uh, magnification. So both of these techniques have their advantages and disadvantages, but depending upon the application that researcher is interested in, they can either opt for SEM or, C, or, T, or TEM. Scanning probe micro based microscopy is a separate method, it's a different method than the light microscopy or the electron microscopy that we discussed. In electron microscopy and the light microscopy, the sample is illuminated either with using electron beam or using the light microscope as a source of illumination. However, in this, instead of uh, illuminating it, sample, uh, sample is physically mapped and the, uh, the structure and the distribution of uh, sample is physically mapped using cantilever tip. For example, in this picture as you can see, laser is pointed toward the cantilever tip and the cantilever tip is scanning the entire sample. So depending upon the depth and the height at which the contact is made, that information is uh, directed toward the photodiode which is used to construct an image uh, of based upon the interaction pattern that cantilever experience. This mapping is very fine and can be very high resolution because the cantilever tip is moved uh, using the uh, piezoelectric system whether it can be scanning or by a tapping mode uh, in both the in both the processes through which it maps is highly motorized is and, and highly controlled that's why we can get resolution up to atomic level and the capability of this uh, system has been utilized in understanding uh, in determining the structure of chromosome as well as the uh, as well as in the physical samples uh, or as well as the samples uh, as well as different sample which is used in geography or in physical sciences as well so this technique uh, is very very multi-dimensional and provides a very good very high resolution scanning near field optical microscope or SNOM this uh, microscopy allows a resolution again very high resolution of 220 nanometer lateral as well as 2.5 to vertical resolution and this is 
based upon because this microscopy is exploit the evanescence wave nature uh, and evanescence wave are actually um, uh, oscillating magnetic field which do not propagate so if a evanescence wave is generated on the sample or within the sample it will oscillate there and the energy uh, within that area in confined area can be used uh, to generate a image of a high, a high resolution image of our sample in this evanescent field is created for a sample uh, when we focus our laser light and pass it through aperture which is smaller than the excitation wavelength uh, so what happens that we create a near field as well as a far field and then we have created the evanescence field with which we can uh, we can image our sample and this uh, techno this method is used extensively in turf where the membrane structure and the um, membrane structure and organization is is viewed at in very high resolution in this we discuss about the differences between the light microscope and the electron microscope and at this table also represents uh, is just representing the fundamental difference that we have between light and uh, electron microscope first the visible light that is used in light microscope uh, compared to the electron beam that is used in microscope uh, electron microscope is very different resolving power is very poor in light microscope but very very high in electron microscope we can achieve very high magnification again electron microscope compared to this one uh, the light source again is different in both the cases the lenses uh, in light microscopes are glasses compared to the magnets in electron microscope uh, the interior in a uh, microscope is air filled and compared to the vacuum filled in electron microscope and we can get generate an image either on a screen or in a uh, or in a photographic film in electron microscope when back in in light microscope we can visualize it through our eyes as well and one of the major difference between these two microscopy that light will allow us to visualize fixed that is dead cell as well as the live cells because the uh, the light which is uh, illuminating the subject is uh, a sample is not toxic but on the other hand electron microscope can only visualize the fixed cell that is dead cells because it is beamed by the uh, very high electron which it is uh, bombarded with a high voltage electron beam so this student by the end of this module i hope you have understood that light microscopy is a very powerful tool in terms of visualizing a smaller object we can because we can magnify it in high resolution as well as get in high contrast and as you must have learned that there are several adaptation that has been made to light microscopy whether it is a bright field dark field phase contrast or polarizing one we have utilized the capability of the light which is a wave and how it can be used uh, to visualize different samples to get more or different kind of information from each sample also you must have understand the electron microscopy that has been used to get a very high magnification as well as higher resolution of uh, uh, the sample and it also has two variants SEM and TEM depending upon the application we can use either of those ones but the important feature is that in electron microscope we use electron beam to illuminate the sample instead of using light as a illuminating source and light microscopy will allow us to image both whether it's fixed cells that means the dead cells or the live cells but electron microscopy has a limitation because we are dealing with a very high voltage electronic beam samples has to be fixed that means the samples are dead and they are fixed on a grid when we are visualizing it also there are other techniques like surface probing based microscopy SPM uh, which is also uh, we know is uh, uh, atomic force microscopy will allow us to give us a higher resolution at the atomic level also but this technique is based upon probing the sample by using a physical cantilever and also near uh, near field microscopy which is also have one application in, in turf which has been uh, which uses evanescence wave to get a very high resolution uh, in both X and Y as well as in vertical resolution um, so as you can see microscopy has several variants 
and has been adapted over the years depending upon the, uh, the, the requirement of the researcher as well as the kind of sample that we have to visualize. Microscopy has adapted from light microscopy whether it's electron microscopy or many variations of fluorescent microscopy which will be discussed in another paper or other modules. Thank you.